Hey guys, this video is from our latest Rick and Johnny podcast. Make sure to check out the full podcast on blogtalkradio.com backslash Rick and Johnny. I hope you guys enjoyed it. I know Johnny and I had fun recording it. This podcast is brought to you by Most Valuable Podcasts, saving your day from boredom with the best podcasting entertainment. What's up, what's up, everybody? Ricky Whitmer here, along with fellow man-child, Johnny Carlin. Whoa, well, love a dub dub And we are back for the Rick and Johnny podcast here on Most Valuable Podcast. If you're on YouTube, thank you for watching us, and hello, it is wonderful to see you. If you're on Blog Talk Radio, iTunes, or Stitcher, it is wonderful to be talking to you again, and thank you for the listen and the download, because Johnny, we have a jam-packed show like yeah, we, we normally do. do. We're going to be talking about top five Marvel heroes. We're going to be going through our list of the top five Marvel heroes, that respectively, for yourself and myself. We're going to be looking at Rampage the Movie, which... I'm interested about because Same. I loved the game as a child. Game just, was great as a kid. I just don't know how it's going to translate to as a, a movie. movie. We're going to talk about that, but more importantly, what we're going to start the podcast off with is comic books, and we're going to be talking about our must-read comics, ones that we have read that if you guys out there have not read, you guys have to get your hands on these comics and have to read them. But Johnny, there's a reason why we're doing this first topic let everyone know why we're talking about our favorite comics today. So the reason we bring up our favorite comics today, the ones we re- we really think you guys sh- would enjoy, should check out, whether you think so or not, just do it anyways. Um, this <laughs> Whether you think they're great or not, just do it. Just try it. Awesome. Try something new. Um, the reason we're doing this is because this Saturday, May 6th, mm-hmm. will be Free Comic Book Day. And from what I've heard, any comic book store, it's National Free Comic Book Day, any comic book store worth its stuff should have something going on. So go hit up your favorite comic book store, get some free comic books, buy some more stuff to keep them in business. And you know what? Um, Check out their events. Some of them, hey, you might get extra stuff if you cosplay. Mm -hmm. And that is why we're talking about this. And Johnny, must read comics. I'll let you start it off. Give me one comic that you have read. That you're like, you know what, if you have not read this comic, you have to read it. I'm going to start off with one that was turned into a movie. I'm okay. using that very loosely because okay, okay. Marvel Civil War. Okay. There is a bunch of different... I was reading the mm-hmm. graphic novels. Yeah. And I'm in the middle well, the of the graphic it. novels are just the collection of the comics. Yeah, exactly. So we'll go so comics, we'll go graphic, graphic novels. novels. It's all the same. Yeah, well, what I... So, what I did is I've read a few of them so far. Mm-hmm. I'm still in the middle of doing it, but I think it's a great storyline. I started with the basic one that tells you the whole layout of the basic, mm-hmm. the ideal story. Now, I'm... Um, I'm actually going through characters. There's a Captain America, Iron Man, Black Panther. It's just basically whatever what that character was doing at the time. I've read a few of them already, mm-hmm. and I that's a high. I highly recommend it. Has really almost nothing to do with the the movie. So if you think that has any indication, absolutely not. The only things that really correlate are Captain America versus Iron Man, and Spider Man takes Captain America's side. That's really about all that correlates. Spoilers, by the way. We yeah. got to throw that out. Spoilers. But if you haven't seen it by now, we're going to try to, we're going to try to, I want to keep this spoiler free. And I was thinking about that as you were talking. I was like, huh, we didn't. Uh, the comic book spoiler or the movie we, spoiler? The comic books. Like, I don't want to spoil these. Like, these okay. are ones where if we're telling people they got to go read it, I don't want to tell you to go read it and then spoil it for you. So, I mean, on that side, in the movie side of it, it's spoiled. Comic book side, the thing that I love. Most because I've read that one too. Yeah. And the thing I love most about that story is what everything does to Captain America. You get the feels for Cap. Yeah, you do. More so in that comic. Like, and I'm talking about not the because if you guys are unfamiliar, like Johnny said, they have the main basic. It's like the first five issues of Civil War are like the beginning, building up to the Civil War. Everything going on with Spider Man and um and Tony. You have everything going on with uh, Cap on the other side. Yep. They have a different intro to the comic book that's different from the movie that I actually like better because it gets everything going more. I feel like the story is better than the movie, but that's not what this is about. I exactly. just liked it because the story was great. 
I felt for. Maybe it's because I was a Cap guy. Like, out of Cap and Iron Man, like, if you ask me to pick one or the other, I'm going to go on the side of Cap and Captain Rogers. And I just feel like this is the one graphic novel, this is the one comic series where not only do you feel for Cap, but it's one of those things where you get to see one of your favorite heroes, if you love Cap, you get to see him at his most vulnerable state. Yeah, no, I completely agree. It's a great way to show that. Um, Honestly, if you look at both sides, Mm -hmm. you get to see kind of Tony at a more vulnerable and a Mm -hmm. very different state than he normally is in. He's normally not really governmentally uh, attuned. Mm -hmm. He doesn't like all that stuff. And this story kind of like pulls it out of him and makes him see a new, almost like a new light Mm -hmm. and a new type of Tony. Well, and the reason why is, and this is the only thing I'll go into the story with it, how it's different and how I like it a little bit better, is most of the story is re- revolved around the the idea that, okay, you're a superhero. Spoilers you should real have, quick. Well, this is just the general story. Yeah. You should, that superheroes should be registered with the government. Yes. That's it. Like that, that to Which me. Which actually is kind that of. That to me is more, was more relatable than what we saw in well, the how movie. Well, they, how they went about it then in the movie mm-hmm. is more relatable because they both of them were type of a yeah. type of registration. Mm-hmm. But this one kind of had more relatable way of this going about it. This one was you have like a superhero number and it's just that concept of the government knows who every superhero is. And tell you tells you where to go. And tells you where to go and you're basically a government employee. employee. Whereas with me, I related to that and then plus also... Like I said, the whole thing with, um, with just Captain America, I was like, man, this this is a great story. One that I'm gonna throw out there, yes. And I know this is one that you have not read, so this is not just me telling them they have to go read it. You have to go read it as well, and it's Morning Glories. Okay. And this is if you have not been following a graphic conversation here on Most Valuable Podcast, Mark and myself have read these and um it's to me it's an amazing series if you loved i want to say if you like stranger things if you like mystery if you like things that are like paranormal yeah you'll love morning glories it's a story that takes these kids from all parts of the world they get invited to a gifted school and then there's things going on at this school that just don't make sense. Things that are like supernatural, things that have dark mystic powers. It's a very like there have been times in this that Morning Glories has made me go, what the fuck? And that's what I love about it. Like it's one of these things where you get so attached to the characters and then it's it just throws your curveball when you're not expecting it. Hmm. It's like a what was going on here kind of a thing where it's more of it's not that like superhero genre like we talked about with yeah. Civil War. It's kind of to me, I would kind of call it that mi- not mystery genre because I want to say when I say mystery genre, like Dick Tracy pops to yeah, my head. No, exactly. Detective Batman pops to my head and it's nothing like that. It's just more of like. I want to say supernatural. So I want to say it's more like Stranger Things ish, like in the kind of attitude that it goes for. Yeah. Where it has a story. It's not in the 80s, of course. It's in present day times, but it has a story, but it makes you think, it makes you question. And there's so many theories that you can think of coming from that. And I know this is one I've been telling you for the longest time. You got to pick up, you got to read Morning Glories. Yep, you're right. You have been telling me for a while about that one. <laughs> What's another one? It's another one for me. Um, It's a little bit of a bias, obviously. Mm-hmm. Wolverine. Origins. Well, origins or just Wolverine in general? I mean, any comic book is great with him, but I actually <laughs> purposely started with like, you know what? I want to know Wolverine mm-hmm. origins. The comic book origin, like called okay. Wolverine colon origins. Mm-hmm. It just starts him off kind of like you saw in the first Wolverine movie, except better <laughs> um where he's a kid his name's his name is james hollett mm-hmm. and he's it's actually more developed about his childhood and then gets into 
his powers and then how he runs away from home. And I'm actually going through that one right now. So there's a lot of them that goes out throughout the years that they skip in the movie. There's so much they could have done with that year span mm-hmm. from 1836 to the 1970s. I have honestly, because that's the one thing. Wolverine is the one person, one like superhero. Yeah. Where I haven't read a lot of graphic novels with him even in it. Yeah. Like most of the X-Men ones I've read. I think actually I lied. I forgot. We did read Days of Future Past for a graphic conversation. I think that's the only one. I think that's the only X-Men one that we've read with him actually in it. Hmm. I'm trying to think. But yeah, like X-Men to me, most of them have gone with like Cyclops stories, um, Jean Grey, but without the um, Wolverine in there. Yeah. And... That's like one origin story that, like, just thinking about it, I went, huh, off the top of my head, I could tell you kind of his origin story, but I can't tell you in-depth details. Yeah, no, I actually thought it was really good. I would recommend it to you as well as Mm -hmm. them to check it out. It's a six-part for the original, like, just Wolverine colon origins. Because his origin story isn't as known. I would say it isn't as known detail-wise as like a Superman, as like a Batman. Like no. you could you could walk up to anybody on the street, say Batman origin story, and they could probably give you seventy five percent of the details. Exactly. I would say. No one really like not a lot of people know detail, just like you said. You don't know detail his, like origin, his origin story before the Weapon X. Project, exactly. A lot yeah. of people will probably go, you say Wolverine Origins, then they'll start spewing out Weapon X. It's mm-hmm. like, no, that's not his origins. That's yeah. just the Weapon X part of his mm-hmm. whole span of storyline. Yeah. Were, that's an interesting part. Another one, I'm going to go off of that yeah. with one. Actually, it pops into my head. This one did have Wolverine in it, and it had... I'm going to... For this one, I'm going to... Spoilers, kind of. I'm going to throw one thing out that's going to be a spoiler in this one, so I'm sorry. But we read um, Deadpool Kills the Marvel Universe. Okay. Phenomenal. I've Phenomenal read. Like, this is Deadpool... Let, read a little bit into it. Through and through, where it's... Oh, he it's he's talking to you. He's going through and actually like this is one where like this is what I expected Deadpool to be. Yeah. I expected Deadpool to be this exactly where it has the brutality of Deadpool. It has the just like it's just Deadpool. He talks to you, he murders people. And the one thing that I found cool and what actually you bringing up Wolverine Origins yeah. sparked into my head was the way he kind of killed Wolverine Yeah, was basically, and this was the part of the graphic novel that I thought was so cool. That was just the coolest because I didn't even think about this. So he chains Wolverine up on his, like Wolverine's on his knees and he's chained like this, mm-hmm. right? So... What happens is he has two, like, um, flamethrowers on Wolverine that basically bring him to the point of death, and they just stay. To where it's like his healing factor is healing him, but as his healing factor heals, the cells die right away. It's just canceling out the healing factor. So he's basically a burnt, charred mess. While these flamethrowers are just on him. So, yeah, he's just basically... So, basically, yeah, he's kind of dead. Like, he can't do anything. He can't move his healing factor. It's just canceling out the healing factor. Yeah, and I go, holy shit. Like, I never thought... Because that was the one coming into it. I was like, how do you kill Wolverine? Yeah. How do you... Old old man Logan out of the way. Because old man Logan is when, you know, the healing factor is not really healing. Diminishing, yeah. I'm talking normal Wolverine. I was coming in In his prime Wolverine, yeah. I'm like, how do you kill Wolverine? Like, um, you can't. Bullet pops out. He'll heal himself. You cut him. He'll heal. You stab him. He'll heal. Decapitation doesn't work. It'll it'll come back. It's one of those things where how do you kill him? And I saw that. And that was the spoiler, I'm sorry, that I had to throw out there because I wanted to talk about it. But no, I like it. It uh, correlates. And I have heard little things here and there about it. So yeah, that one's another one that interests me. And the ending, and this will be my tease for Deadpool Kills the Marvel Universe. 
my tease is, and I'm actually going to tell you this off camera. Okay. You guys, I can't tell because I want you guys to go out and read it. But Go read. It's basically the ultimate break the fourth wall by Deadpool. Oh, wow. Like the last like few panels, the last like page, I would say, the ultimate break the fourth wall. From Deadpool. Well, I'm interested to hear what that is, like and I'm going to go and buy it, like, actually. This is, like, the very end, it's like, holy shit, that is Deadpool. Like, I could see him actually doing that, and I've never seen him do that in any other comic, in any TV show. Ultimate fourth wall break for Wolverine. Or not for Wolverine, for Deadpool. Yes. What's another one? Give me another one that people must read. You know what? Um, there's a few of them I've just been... Mm -hmm. Honestly, my, uh, the comic book near my school has this free comic book. Uh, every Wednesday, you get three of the 50-cent bins okay. for free. So what I started picking up, and I've only read two, three mm -hmm. of them. They're just the actual comics, not graphic novels, uh -huh. is Doc Frankenstein. Okay. It's I don't have a lot of the story right now. But I think it's it, so far it's been really good. Mm -hmm. um, it's along the line. It's Frankenstein's monster. Yeah. Um, going throughout the years, mm -hmm. and he's solving. A bit, um, just actually, he's trying to. He's fighting like there's a bunch of people he's going up against, uh, which it seems like the church he's going up against. Packs of werewolves he's going mm -hmm. up against. It's just so far it's been a really good good read. He's got one friend that's a werewolf from the old west. Mm -hmm. And so far, from what I read, it's just a really good, like, the little snippets I've read are really good storylines. Say it one more time. What's it called? Doc Frankenstein. Doc Frankenstein. So it's just the story of Frankenstein? Or no, it's it the not... story of Dr. Frankenstein. No, it's called Doc Frankenstein. Uh -huh. But is it is Frankenstein's monster. He is cut. Okay. They call him Doc Frankenstein. So they're calling Frankenstein Doc Frankenstein. Yes. That's so weird. And it like, is. That's one it's where... it's kind of like um the... Um, supernatural ish type mm -hmm. thing that you're talking about yeah. got a little bit of a Hellboy feel to me. Okay, but okay. yeah, I, I I'm enjoying it so far. That's one comic series I have to read. Hellboy, is Hellboy. I agree. Like, I I want to say because like when I was, ugh, it had to be early teens is when those Hellboy movies yeah. came out for us. What was that? It was early mid teens? 2000? I think. Was it mid teens? I want to like, say it was mid early, like mid to early two thousand. So yes. like I was early high school. Is where I was, and I never like me and you have talked about this before, but not in um, length. In high school and in like junior high, yeah, I was never like comic books weren't the thing. No, and it was one of those I things agree. where I was the same like, way. E like I would consider myself a nerd, but it was more of like the non comic book side of nerd. Like we would go to a comic book store. But we would go to play Magic the Gathering. We wouldn't go to buy comic books. We would go to play the card game or play Yu-Gi-Oh! But mostly it was Magic the Gathering because that's yeah. what we were into. It wasn't until like college that I really was like, holy shit, what am I missing out on? Yeah, like I, I read that for my first comic book I ever read was Batman Hush. Which okay. is a great it's Batman Hush, I'm not gonna put it up in like my top fives or anything. But the thing I loved about it. And the thing that, like, it really got me into then reading more comics and then starting a graphic conversation with Mark, which I'd love to have you on yeah. one of those because now we have the Rick and Johnny podcast here, is it was really nice to read something. I would say, and this is kind of like my advice to someone who's just going to start reading comics, Yeah, don't read a series. No. Don't start with a series first. Like, the Civil War that we talked about... Don't go ahead and read number one of Civil War. Read a one-off. Yeah. Because that's what Hush was. It was a story that started, and the whole kind of story was around the villain Hush, which I had no idea about coming in. He's the, Never heard of him, He's honestly. the one that's, like, wrapped in, like, bandages, and he's the villain that basically is – he's a plastic surgeon – Okay. Who is trying to make himself look like Bruce Wayne. Oh, wow. So, like, and he's depicted, like, in his villain form with all the white bandages around him and, like, with the trench coat and the um the hat on his head. Yeah. But it's one where, like, all these murders are going on. It has a bunch of the different villains in there. And it's a one-off. So huh. it starts, and then when it ends, it ends. Like, there's a little thing where, like, 
it kind of cliffhangs into something for the greater universe. Yeah. But it's not like it doesn't cliffhang into a part two of the series. That's what I would do. So if you've never read a comic book, read one that's a one-off, where it's like, boom, and then you're done. If not that, I would say find one character you're very passionate mm-hmm. about, and then you can do a short series. I would go with a short series to start off. Yeah. Like I like I did uh, Wolverine, always loved him. Mm-hmm. I actually started off, well, actually, I did first I started off with a booklet like this thick of a bunch of his comic books. Show them how thick? About yay big. Okay. It was about yay thick. <laughs> it had like a, just a bunch. It like mm-hmm. went through some early stuff, then went through some mid stuff, and yeah. then it went then it did some like recent stuff. Mm-hmm. I did the same thing with Thor too, and I got some of the Ragnarok story yeah, from again, that one. Like you said, two heroes that you're kind of into. Yeah. So I mean, it's a good way to do it instead. Mm-hmm. Is either something you're like he said a one off, or something that you're really into, a character you really know mm-hmm. you would not want to just put the book down. And that's going to lead me to my last one. Yes. The last one that I'll bring up before we move on is, and this is one for two people. Okay. If you love Batman, any Batman, you are a Batman fan and he is your favorite hero like he is mine. Or if you're a 90s kid and you remember watching the animated series, you've got to go out and read Batman Mad Love. Okay. You have to. And the reason why I say those two, and if you if you meet one of those, you'll love it. If you meet both of those, you'll want to read it again and again and again. The reason why I say if you meet both of them is it was it's a Bruce Tim, meaning it looks like the gra- it looks like the comic, uh, the cartoon. Okay. It looks like the animated series. Okay. So, like, I remember as I was reading it, because the one thing when I read graphic novels, when I read comics, if I know the voice in my head, oh yeah, like if the Joker's talking, I will try to read it in my head, like Mark Hamill. Yeah. I will try to read Harley Quinn like she was in the animated series. If I'm reading Batman. I try in my head to that emulate Brooklyn. Kevin Conroy. Like, yeah. That's what I try to do. Like right now, if it's like Thor, if I'm going to read a Thor graphic novel with my base knowledge, my default would be Helmsworth. Um, and that's what I do. I try to like, if it's a Russian character, I try to, if I'm alone, I'll read it out loud. That way I can read it in that Russian accent. Yeah. No, in that crappy I'm not Russian that. accent. Cause I'm not that good with the Russian, <laughs> but, uh, it's one of those things where you can then do stuff like that to just make it just pull it more out of the page. Yeah, and Mad no, Love I to agree. me, it's a one off. It looks just like the animated series. And that was one the only reason why I read it was the only reason why I had it was an old girlfriend gave it to me for a birthday gift. She's like, You love Batman? Here you go. It's signed by Bruce Tim, which one of my prized possessions. Nice. One of my absolute prized possessions is that Mad Love graphic novel, or gra- Mad Love comic, because it's an yeah. actual one-off comic. It's not a graphic novel. Yeah. And it's a great story. It revolves around Harley Quinn, looks exactly like the animated series. And if you love Batman, you love the 90s Batman animated series, you have to read it. Any last thoughts on this? No. And especially about Free Comic Book Day, the whole reason why we did this. Exactly. You know what? I'll reiterate again, just in case you forgot or anything. Mm -hmm. May 6th, go hit your your favorite comic. Saturday. Saturday. Thank you. May 6th, go hit your favorite comic book store. Get your free comics. If you have a cosplay, grab it out of your closet. Get the dust off of it. Wear it. Or just make sure you check first. If it still fits, because mine doesn't. Yeah, if it still fits. You can make adjustments. You have a week to do so, approximately. Yeah, I don't know if I can add that much fabric. I kind of gained uh, a little bit in that department. But just check first what the, um, their their offers are. Some mm-hmm. of them are doing cosplay things. You get extra stuff. Some of them are doing raffles. Mm-hmm. Go to your comic book store. Get your free comic books. And that's all I got for uh, this gra- this uh, conversation. Well, this is where we're going to turn the conversation on to you guys. Let us know down below in the comment section what comics do you think are must-reads? What do you think about just comics in general? If you love comics, what was the first comic you ever read? 
Let's have a discussion in the comment section just talking about, A, our favorite comics, our must-read comics, and kind of throw out a bunch of ideas. Give us your suggestions. Maybe you guys have read one that me and Johnny have not, and we're always looking for new comics to read, new graphic novels to read. So go ahead, let us know down below in the comment section. Also hit that subscribe and that like button. Uh, uh, I I don't know about this, Rick. Just do it, Morty. Uh, th- th- thank you for watching most available podcast video. If you want to watch more of them, just watch them right here. And th- th- thank you for watching. Mm.